Have you ever dreamed of crushing a forehand? Well, if you have, you're in luck because today we're gonna teach you the why, when, and how to crush forehand. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with the why. Why do you want to crush your forehand? Well, we all know the answer. You just want to be able to step up, crush that thing with effortless power, blow it by your opponent. That feels great. But it, you got to go deeper than that because you're not going to be able to play a match from beginning to end just hitting every ball as hard as you can. But on the other hand, I do think it's important to be able to change gears like a 10 sp speed bike. So the ability to hit the ball slow, medium, and fast, that supersonic shot, you want to be able to do that so that your opponent never really quite knows what's going to be coming off your racket. So that's why you want to be able to hit a hard forehand. But next we're going to talk about when. When are the best times to bring out your supersonic forehand? So let's get into that right now. So in tennis you have two golden opportunities to start offensively with your forehand right away and that's when you're serving and when you're returning. Now when you're serving, the pros do a lot of what I call serve and shading. So they're gonna, they're gonna serve that ball into the court and then they're gonna shade and cheat towards their forehand side expecting the ball that anything that lands shorter or in the middle of the court, this is an opportunity to really take offense and go to a corner, especially the open court is usually wide open because you have your opponent cornered. So you've got a, a big advantage right there in the beginning of the point and, and especially you've got more margin to go for. So it just gives you a little more freedom to go for that offensive shot. Now the next situation is when you're returning. Now if you're out there playing league tennis and, and especially if you're playing a 4-0 level or below, there are many opponents you're gonna play that have very weak second serve. So this is an opportunity to cheat in and really make them pay. The one fatal mistake you don't wanna make though is to overswing. You're, you're seeing that lollipop serve come in, so you think, okay, now I've gotta crush the ball, and I've gotta create all my own pace, which you actually don't have to. And so people take too big a backswing. So when we get into the how, a little bit later in this video, we're gonna talk about that it doesn't take big backswings to generate the power. So especially on these second serves, you're gonna be cheating inside the court, so you cannot afford to have a big backswing, most likely you're gonna miss. So we wanna shorten up, but it's a great time to attack on the forehand. Now once the point starts to develop, I'm gonna, it gets a little more complicated on when we wanna be going for our big forehand. So let's get into that. Okay, so now we're, we're in a neutral rally and uh, this is when it becomes especially important to make the right decision on when to go for power. When, when is pace gonna be the right play on your forehand side to take control of the point? And so notice where we are right now. I'm staying way back here with you guys. In, in an area to where we most likely are gonna be on defense. So this is not a great time to try and establish a lot of power. Instead, back here, we're usually trying to establish height to get, to get out of this position, to give ourselves time to get back into a neutral position in the point and also hopefully back our opponent into a defensive position, which lots of times Rafa is great at this, you know, hitting a big heavy ball here and then quickly turning uh, defense into offense. So back there, not a good place to be going for the power. Also, when we're right here and we're a little bit behind the baseline, this is also not a great time to be trying to, to, to show your muscle and your might. This is a great time where you're gonna be trying to do your consistency. In fact, when balls are coming your waist and lower, it's not necessarily the best time to try and absolutely crank a forehand winner. It's not a bad time to try and take a little bit of offense and maybe hit the ball uh, a little harder than you're used to. But right when you're here, this is when you wanna, you, you wanna establish a nice cross court rally and, and try and get a ball that lands a little shorter. This is when we can start to think about now a great time to take some offense. So when we start to get here and in, the more we get here and in, this is when we start to be able to try and take more and more chances and really crush that forehand. So if I'm in a, if I'm in a cross court rally with my opponent here and I'm rallying back and forth, we're rallying back and forth, and then all of a sudden one's up here, and especially if it's getting around your chest or even a little higher, this is a great time to use the leverage and swing through the ball and really drive the ball. So, so that's when you wanna to start to really think about taking offense. Now, as I get closer and closer, this is when we get more and more excited, maybe actually even try and hit some winners. 
especially if you can see over the net and you can see the other side of the court. This is when you start to give yourself the ultimate green light. And I think people don't wait long enough for this opportunity to where when you're hitting, if you can't see the other side of the court, you're taking on a big risk, okay? Also, as the ball is becoming again, if you get a short ball, you want to get good at, at taking high balls in the air around your chest level. This is when it becomes really easy to crush a ball and give yourself a great chance that you're not gonna miss the shot. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those opportunities where the ball is short, higher, this is gonna allow players of our ability to actually go for it, hit almost at full capacity and still keep the ball in play. So let me show you what I mean as far as being able to see the other side of the court. Okay, so I just wanted to hold the camera to kind of show you this view of what I get. Now, if I get a short ball around here and I can see the other side of the court, this is where I can really take on a big risk and go for the shot hit maybe my hardest forehands of the match. So this is a great time for you and I to really take the offense. So you're looking for these opportunities to strike the ball and go almost 100% power on your shot. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in today's video. So the first thing we gotta be able to do is recognize that a short ball might be on the way. So if, if you're hitting and you're rallying a point and maybe you hit a shot uh, a little more cross court than you were anticipating doing and you see your opponent start to stretch, this is a good opportunity to cheat in and then also when you see that ball coming off the racket, you really gotta move forward early. What I see happen too often is balls that will actually be landing in the service box there, the ball will bounce in the service box and then it will go up and then it will start to come down and you see it's a lollipop and then you move one or two steps in and then you try and crush it from here and you miss. And again, now you're having to hit the ball over the higher part of the net and you're trying to do something that's maybe a little bit out of your skill set at the moment. It's really, really tough to do that. Instead, what you want to do is as soon as you see that ball coming weaker over the net, you're trying to get to where that ball is about to bounce. You, you want that ball to be able to bounce and come up about this high. That's the timing you want to establish. And you don't want the ball to be on its way back down. You want to take it on the rise. So you see that ball come, you move on up to it, it bounces, you hit, and you come through the shot. And this is a way you can really, really crush a ball, take offense, and end the point. So I'm gonna demo a couple, and this is actually a great drill. Besides just watching and learning here, this is something you can actually go out and do by yourself, and it will be harder than it looks, okay? And it will help you establish that timing of taking the ball on the rise and swinging down to the court. Now, one of the first things we wanna do is we're gonna start focusing on our footwork but we want to especially focus on a short backswing. Really putting our hands out to the side here and almost in front of our belly button is what we want to think. So when we go to take our racket back, it doesn't go too far back. All right, guys, so, so watch this. I'm gonna self-feed myself and try and get up on it early and swing down and through the court. This is a great time, if you're able to get a ball like this in a match, to come on up and crush that forehand approach shot. Let's try a couple more. So again, I see that ball, and as soon as it bounces, I want to get on top of that ball and come on into it. So again, I'm coming up, I'm getting up to that ball, hitting, getting down, and through that shot. Now, we also really want to work on the footwork. There's very specific footwork you want to do. The first thing you're usually gonna do when you see this happen is, is a split step, and then you're gonna go into a drop step and push forward. This is gonna help you get going faster to the ball. And then not long after that, it depends on how far you gotta to move to the ball, you wanna be getting in a sideways hopping rhythm, okay? I like to call it a hop, hop, and hit. You're either gonna do one hop and hit, or if you get a double hop and hit, that's also a great thing to be able to do. So let's see how many hops I get in here before I go in and attack the ball. So here it comes, I move forward, then I'm going my hop and my hit. Let's try it again. Now this hop and hit rhythm helps you create a lot of effortless power because the, the momentum of your body is actually just 
kind of adding to the easy, effortless power. You're not having to do much here with your hands when you get your body flowing and attacking through the ball. It also takes you right in position. By the time you stop and slow down, you're basically in pole position at the net. Let's take a look at a couple from the back view. Okay, so we're taking a look at a couple from the back view. Now, when I get up there, I'm actually able to see down on the court, which is a great time, as we've been talking about, to go for it. And to make my shot a little easier, if I go cross court over the lower part of the net, I'm going to be going over the lower part of the net, which is a bonus, and the court's going to be a little bigger for me over there. I'm going to have a little more room, a little more margin for error. Now, if I do this, I got to make sure that I cover my line quickly. It's, it's a great idea to go down the line when, the further you get over here, but you're hitting over the higher part of the net. So let's take a look at both. So here we go. I'm coming up. I'm going to get that hop, hit, and close on the ball. Let's do a couple more. The key is to let the legs make the shot, guys. The legs are me adding the crushing power to the ball. Okay. Now another thing I'm doing, now another thing I'm doing to keep the ball in is I'm getting slightly below the ball and then over the ball, really coming, and it's like you almost feel like your strings are going downwards as you're hitting the shot because it's easy to hit these balls long. All right. So here we go. I'm going to come on up, go over the ball. And you can see we made that by a lot. And your opponent also feels like you're hitting the ball harder because you're taking the ball on the rise. That's what Federer does so well. The, the more you get to the ball closely and you hit it, your opponent has less time to catch up with that ball, even if you're hitting a little shorter. Those balls, for most people, are going to have enough pace to get by them. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's recap and summarize when and how we want to be hitting those forehand crushing shots. First of all, it's a great opportunity right off the serve. If you're getting the ball in the middle of the court, especially when you can move into, you have a wide open court to attack. So be looking for that. Maybe a little more offensive mind with your first serve. Also be looking for weak second serves. Don't stand all the way back with big backswings. Move in tighter and short and keep your backswing short. And you can also use that hop method to attack second serves. And then finally, when you get into your rally ball situations, don't force hard crushing forehands from deep in, in the court and also on the baseline. Look for that to more be your rally ball. And then when you start to move in, especially when you get right to the mid court, this is your sweet spot. This is when you can start to see the other side of the court and this gives you a green light to really go for it. But again, remember, we're going to need short backswings, not big backswings. We need short backswings and we need the rhythm of our legs to make this shot instead of just running up, stopping and crushing. That's when you're going to miss a lot of shots. So I hope you like this video. I hope it takes your forehand crushing abilities to the next level because that's what I'm all about. So whether you are a 3-0 and you want to get to that 3-5 or you're a 3-5 and you're looking to get to a 4-0 or a 4-5 or a 4-0 looking to get to a 4-5 and a 4-5 and beyond, I've got a program called Next Level University where we work together one-on-one, -on -one, online, and it's totally affordable. And I've got an eight-part free training series that kind of explains how it works. So watch this preview at the end and make sure to sign up. And oh yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Sign off. Thanks so much for watching today's video. 
right guys, Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Today we've got a really cool lesson for you. We're gonna teach you the super spinner boomerang drop shot. Okay guys, I, I gotta be honest with you. Learning the super spinner boomerang drop shot is not gonna get your game to the next level in the next 12 months. And my job as your tennis coach is to help you consistently get better, see the progress, grow in your tennis game. So what we're gonna do today is a little different. We're gonna put down the racket, we're gonna put down the balls, we're gonna leave the tennis court, and we're gonna head on over to my house, and I'm gonna show you exactly, step by step, the pitfalls to avoid, and what you really need to be doing over the next 12 months if you wanna see your game go up to the next level. So come on, let's go.